Hey, what's up? I hope you're doing well. So a while ago, somebody asked me if I could make a guide for getting started with GIMP. And what I thought would be really useful would be a guide for people switching over to GIMP from a different program, which is pretty relevant now since 3.0.0 just officially released. Uh, you can get it with GIMP Devel uh, on the AUR, or you can just uh, go to their site, compile it from source or get a flat pack. Uh, but anyways, I made pretty much just a list of things about GIMP that were not really obvious to me when I started using it as somebody who mainly used Photoshop before GIMP. Uh, so anyways, yeah, I will put timestamps in the description for everything I go over. I wanted to start with uh, transparency, since by default, you're not gonna have transparency on your you know, first image in GIMP. You're gonna, if you try to erase, right? This is just erasing to my background color, which happens to be white, uh, rather than erasing to transparency. So if you want transparency, right click your layer, add alpha channel, and then you will have transparency on that layer. And the reason for this is by default, you have RGB channels, uh, which is three channels, and then alpha is a fourth channel. Um, and when you add that, you're gonna get a bigger file size because you're adding an extra channel. So GIMP is essentially trying to save you file space by default. Uh, but if you don't like that default, just go to edit and preferences and go to default image. And you can just set here, fill with uh, transparency if you want it to fill with transparency. Uh, you can also set uh, encoding here if you want that. So um, instead of 8-bit, you could go to 16-bit if you want better color depth. Um, that's just gonna be exchanging it for file size. Um, or if you just wanna set the image you're on, just go to image encoding 16-bit integer. You can set it there if you want to. Here, I'll just go ahead and set it. Um, I wanted to go over brush tool a bit. So first of all, if I just try to, here, let me switch colors. I just try to draw here. You'll see it's kind of, you know, jittery. I'm drawing with a high DPI mouse. So, you know, it's not like I'm going to get very smooth lines, but if I turn on smooth stroke, this will get me far smoother lines when I try to draw. Um, so yeah, that is the option there. If you want that, if you want just completely straight lines, just hold down shift and it will give you this line where you can just select the endpoint, and that way you can get fully straight lines. Um, and I should mention, you know, when I'm talking about keybinds, just go to edit and keyboard shortcuts. Um, the keybinds, I'm not going to go over them too much because you can just set all of them. And I would highly encourage, you know, if you're used to Photoshop or a different program and it's keybinds, just set them because it will save you time in the long run. Um, that kind of applies to like pretty much any time you're switching programs. Just set whatever keybinds you're used to rather than trying to, you know, relearn a whole new set of keybinds. Um, anyways, so if you want to save your brush, so like say, you know, make some changes here. I really like this brush. I want to save it. Windows, dockable dialogues, and then tool presets. And you can just click plus here, uh, create a new tool preset, and you will be able to give it a name and store it there. Um, it's the same thing for gradients. If you want to save a gradient, oops, if I go to a uh, gradient tool here and I try to, you know, create a gradient, I should also mention you get this line here that will let you uh, actually set what position your gradient is going to be in. Um, if you hold control by default, it will uh, snap it. So you can do that if you wanted to. Anyways, if you want to save a gradient or create a new one, Windows Dockable Dialogs and Gradients, and you can just do the plus button here, create a new gradient, right click to set your endpoint colors or add new points, etc. Um, so yeah, that's gradients. And anytime you're missing a window or you need something, just go to Windows Dockable Dialogs. If you like lose your layers, that's where that is, etc. Um, I'll go over Windows a bit more uh, later. But anyways, I wanted to talk about the transform versus move tools. I actually uh, brought in an image, mostly just to flex the image because this woodpecker is looking awesome. Um, I got him the other day. He's a pretty cool guy. Anyways, so move versus transform. So move tool by default is going to let you select different layers. So move tool is here. Um, by default, it's just V, uh, but change the keybinds if you want to. And you can actually select different layers than the one you're on. So I can select this layer or this layer, etc. cetera. Uh, whereas the unified transform tool, which by default is Shift T, um, is gonna actually be for transforming. So if you're used to Photoshop's move tool, I would suggest, you know, just set your move tool to unified transform. Um, you can't select layers underneath with it. So you'd have to actually go to your layer menu to select it. Uh, but yeah, that is the difference between those two tools. I kind of wish the unified transform had the ability to actually essentially just work like Photoshop's move tool, uh, but it is what it is. Um, you can just scale, you can uh, shear if you want to, you can rotate on the side, you can hold shift and warp there. 
Uh, you pretty much have every option with this unified transform or you can toggle on the tools individually. It's in that tool group there. Also with flip, so this is actually gonna flip your layer. And if you hold control, it will flip it vertically. If you just wanna flip your view though, so not your actual image or layer, just go to view and then flip and rotate. And you can rotate here as well, but flip horizontally, it's just gonna flip your view. Um, and you can bind a key to that if you want to, etc. Um, so next up, I wanted to talk about uh, this control switching since I actually really like this. If I go to dodge burn, on, uh, I think it's shift D by default, yeah. And you can set all the keybinds. I don't know why I'm bothering to tell you keybinds. You can set them. Anyways, so yeah, you can see it's switching. So if I'm on burn mode, I can just hold control. It goes to dodge mode. The only caveat here is the exposure is actually gonna be linked to both. So like if I set that exposure, it's just gonna be on both. Um, that might be a little bit annoying. You can save tool presets if you want to, but honestly, I'll take that in exchange for just being able to quickly switch with control. Um, I, I, I just like how that works. It's, you know, it's a good feature to have and that applies to a bunch of different tools. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, anyways, oh, I forgot to mention guides actually. So uh, I think I actually complained about this in a different video at one point, but if you go to image guides, new guide by percent, you can set both horizontal and vertical center guides super easily, or you can set, you know, non-centered if you want non-centered. But anyways, um, once you have a guide, if you just go to the move tool and you try to move the layer, it will snap to those guides really easily. So um, I don't know whether I was just complaining for like, I couldn't figure out how to do it or whether they actually did change something to make this work better. Uh, but when I booted up a 3.0.0, uh, this is actually pretty much just working how I would expect. So yeah, guides work. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was selection, which um, honestly on this image, maybe this is kind of a bad example just because it's just a blue background. So like this is relatively easy to just select what I need to select here. Um, I can get away with GIMP selection most of the time. In my opinion, it is not as good as Photoshop. It just isn't. Um, it's made improvements over the years, but if you're gonna be doing, you know, really complex selections, you're probably still gonna need to boot up Photoshop from time to time. Um, there are other tools. There's a select by color. You have your lasso, um, free select, sorry. You've got scissors, foreground select, and then you've got your marquees as well. Um, if you're just doing, you know, basic selection, so like on an image like this, where it's just, you know, a blue background, this is pretty easy for it to just work. Um, but yeah, if you're trying to deal with something more complex, you might have to boot up Photoshop. Uh, that's my opinion on selection, but anyways. Um, I wanted to actually just go back to the windows and talk about the single window mode option here. Since this is kind of the, I guess the main attraction of GIMP, maybe. Uh, I, I like this. If you uncheck this, everything pops out and you can move to other monitors if you want to, which if you then want to make your image full screen is really nice because that way you're not going to have, you know, tool menu like sitting there on the side annoying you. Um, but you can still have it on a separate monitor if you want it. So I can move it over. And actually when you do that, if you go to edit and then preferences, and window management. You can just check uh, open windows on the same monitor they were open before. If you wanna just have your you know, tools menu always on a different monitor or something like that. Uh, you can reset window positions, save window positions, save them on exit. Uh, you can also do the same thing for tool options. You can save them or reset them if you wanted to or save them on exit. Uh, I should also mention with the toolbox, if I drag it back where it's uh, visible here, um, you can uncheck the use tool groups and that will actually show all tools by default if you want to get used to the various tools. You can recheck that and also change just what groups they're in if you wanted to, you know, move the groups around, etc. Um, in terms of preferences, I think pretty much everything else is self-explanatory, as are the tools. Um, you also get, you know, tool tips on the bottom, you know, click, drag to create a new selection, etc. Uh, anyways, so... Yeah, I think GIMP, honestly, if you haven't given it a shot, now is a good time to give it a shot. Um, but I will probably make another one of these uh, videos at some point going over like weird things about GIMP that might not be obvious. Cause I think, you know, before you're used to it, it is kind of intimidating. It is, it does behave pretty differently from Photoshop and other similar Photoshop-esque programs. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I hope you learned something new. I'll see you next time. Peace.